let's get back to the KVTA Morning Show on News Talk 1590 KVTA. It's 840. Already had a great conversation this morning with our guests from Cal State University Channel Islands. As always, we have Kim Lamb Gregory. Kim, good morning. Hello, Spence. Happy Monday. And we have a happy Monday to you. And we have a a great name that we're already going to modify as we go through the conversation. Ombudsman Mark Patterson. Mark, good morning. Hey, Spence. Good morning. Great to have you on board. Now, we did have to address this straight out the gate because my entire life I heard Ombudsman. And as Kim and I were talking, it's kind of a a goofy-sounding name from the start, but having the M-A-N at the end of it these days can create some awkward starter conversation. So in your world of being an ombudsman, what has been your tact in, in you know, uh, going through these waters that we're all navigating these days? Yeah, thanks, Spence. I mean, it, it is kind of a weird name to begin with, ombudsman. Like a lot of ombuds across the country and from the International Ombuds Association, I've switch to ombuds just because I think it's important for people to feel comfortable being able to talk to me, to work with me in dealing with the issues they're facing. And having a term that is heavily gendered in today's environment just doesn't create that kind of atmosphere. So I, I tend to use ombuds, but it, I have to admit, it's still a weird sounding name. And I like taking away a symbol, a syllable rather than adding a couple with ombudsman, person, person, but, but just, you know, it's better ombuds. <laughs> yeah. So I'm liking the sound of this out the gate. But another thing is a lot of people might be confused as to the actual work and uh, the passion. What is an ombuds doing for society? I like to think of it as kind of a, a utility infielder when it comes to conflict and dealing with problems. I have a friend who sent me a button a while ago that said, ombuds, the place to go when you don't know where to go. And it's, it, it doesn't exactly describe what I do, it, it, but it, it does kind of give you a start. If there's somebody who feels like an organization feels like we're having conflict, we're having troubles dealing whether it's uh, interpersonal issues or navigating uh, regulations or rules, and they want an impartial, independent, confidential ear off the record to work through these issues, the Ombuds Office is the place to go. So at Cal State University Channel Islands, uh, why would a college campus need one, and when did this program start at the campus? It was the vision, really, of uh, previous president, uh, Erica Beck, who thought an Ombuds would be an important addition to kind of helping build up a culture at the university where people are empowered to address problems and issues on their own with a little assistance. Having an independent voice and an impartial voice is sometimes a little bit of a a scary thing for university administrators to have somebody who works for the university who doesn't have a responsibility to represent the university. But I really was appreciative of uh, President Beck and and now Interim President Yao's uh, idea that the Ombuds can play a vital role in helping employees feel that they have somebody that can really talk through and work through issues on their terms. And it started really less than two years ago. So it's still kind of a, a process of building for me in this office. I, and I was the first person to hold a job at Channel Island. Okay, Mr. Mark Umbuds patterson why you? <laughs> you know, I think every, every organization that hires an ombuds really wants to have somebody who can adjust the culture and be really part of what the needs of that organization are. And Channel Island still being a fairly young institution, an institution that's going through a lot of change, I, I think I kind of fit in with that. I, before I was an ombuds, I was uh, in the Air Force. I was a lawyer in the Air Force for 24 years and was stationed all over the country, all over the world, Asia and, and Europe, worked in a lot of different organizations for a lot of different bosses. <laughs> a lot of different types of issues came up in my career as a lawyer. And I, I think it kind of built into me this curiosity uh, for learning new things and adaptability to new organizations. And, and I think that's kind of why I, I was a good fit for Channel Island. It's somebody who's really adaptable and comfortable with change and, and growth. Um, and I, I like to think that I you know, just kind of was somebody who, who fit the culture. Retired at the rank of colonel. Wow, that's pretty impressive right there. Now, I would also just venture to guess, Mark, that as you went through 24 years in the Air Force, you were pretty much in the onset of when um, 
we started to really have a lot of women, college-age women, going from high school, entering the Air Force. So that probably created a lot of potential conflict that you dealt with to uh, make the, the men and women of the Air Force, uh, you know, be able to work together and have opportunity. Yeah, I think so, Spence. It's, it, 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 the demographics of all the armed services have changed dramatically uh, over the last 30 years, basically, and, and including for LGB, LGBTQ folks as well. Uh, I was in the Air Force through a lot of that transition, and, and, and I think that's kind of in some ways what sparked my interest in helping organizations and people navigate change is being part of that as a lawyer. Uh, the, the thing about a lawyer is, you know, I have to represent, and, and an ombuds has a little different role in kind of being off the record and an impartial assistant working through things. And it's interesting, too, because part of it is it's not human resources, because human resources would actually have for the campus, I would guess, a an absolute legal determination. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't try to replace or or steer people away necessarily from any formal processes from human resources or collective bargaining agreements or any legal remedies. I never will tell somebody, no, you shouldn't do that. My role is more to supplement and help people figure out what might work, including if they want to use the formal processes, but oftentimes to try to work things informally, kind of off the record, between the lines, bringing people together that might not otherwise be part of a formal process. But it doesn't, it doesn't replace HR. It just complements it. So you are not uh, there to fix things, nor do you actually have the power to do that. So why would somebody come into your office, uh, open up the idea <laughs> of conversation? So uh, you know, what, what is the real gain, especially for the students at Cal State Channel Islands? Yeah, that was, it, it does seem kind of counterintuitive, doesn't it? That, you know, you'd think, why would I, if you're not the guy who's going to come in and kind of shake things up and tell somebody, hey, you're doing this wrong, um, why would I talk to you? In some ways, I think of the expression, you know, when you've got a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't accuse anybody of, of being single-minded and dealing with problems in their roles and, as an administrator or any, with anyone on campus. But because by design, I don't have any role in, in directly fixing things, and I can really allow people to work through problems at their own pace and in ways that work for them and the timing that works for them as well. And I think people often really appreciate that. Sometimes people come to me and they're just not sure what they want to do or if they really want to do anything yet. Uh, they just want to kind of talk it through. And the ombuds allows, allows people to do that without feeling like, okay, I've now started some machine wheels turning that I'm not ready to deal with. And they might even find that there's not a conflict, that there was something there that was a perceived issue that you're able to work through. So I see that much better than Judge Judy and just sort of <laughs> gavel slammed, get out, this is a decision, you're gone. I, I really like the idea that you could stop anything because a person, a light might go on and they'll say, wow, now I realize how I can settle this conflict. I, I like the concept a lot. What would be the hardest part of your job? What do you find most challenging? You know, I have to admit, it actually sometimes feels like, you know, with 24 years as a military officer, like you noted, uh, you know, you reach a certain rank. And as a lawyer, you kind of have the tendency to want to kind of get in and say, this is what you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And I have had to work hard to pull back from that tendency to try to want to fix things for people. And yet it's also been rewarding to see people, kind of like you were noting before, maybe to see that this isn't as awful a situation they felt like. I don't try to talk anybody out. But just provide a perspective like, ah, oh, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. Or to, to kind of hear how others in the situation might be perceiving it. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's sometimes tempting and frustrating to feel like, oh, I can't get in and, and fix it. But it's also rewarding that way. So what's the best part? Is that the reward that you get? Is that what you find in the job as being great? Yeah, you know, it is. <laughs> It really is that kind of when you see that light kind of go on where somebody's kind of, kind of like a light bulb goes off over the head like, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. And I, I really try to do that in a way where I'm not criticizing what their perspective is and what they're saying, but only like, hey, you know, if I was talking to you, Spence, like, hey, is it possible that the station manager might be seeing it this way? And they go, oh, 
Yeah, I guess so. You know, I think that really is really rewarding to be able to provide that perspective that somebody might not be able to get when they're in the depth of their own conflict. Well, it sounds, and again, you've been with the campus how long? Coming on two years. It'll be two years in July. Cal State University, Channel Island, sounds like a great program. I know when I went into school, you know, you, you get into a situation, you're 18, everything's thrown at you. You want to be independent, but you have a lot of questions. And a lot of times college <laughs> even brings in more questions into your head. I think this is a great program. I wonder how many other college campuses have something like this. Uh, that's, is this a growing? Common. It is. This is a growing field. Yeah, it's it is it's a growing field, and higher education is probably the fastest growing area for ombuds work. Uh, the the UC system, all the campuses have ombuds, and then the CSU, about half the campuses do. Awesome. Well, we have had Mark Ombuds Patterson, Cal State University Channel Islands, twenty four years in the Air Force, retiring at the rank of Colonel. Quite a career you've already had, Mark. And uh, congratulations on the job here. And I know the campus is better off having you on staff as the ombuds that will help all the kids uh, get through some issues uh, that they have. So thank you so much for uh, spending a little time on air with us here at KVTA. Great. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ben. And, Kim, that was a wonderful yeah. conversation. Good one again. You brought in. And a- his office, at, when we were on campus, his office was just around the corner. So. If I ever have a conflict, I just have to walk a couple steps over and start bending his ear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. Uh, we had really some exciting news at Cal State Channel Islands recently. Uh, CSU Channel Islands recently received its largest one-time gift in the history of the university from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott and her husband, Dan Jewett, for $15 million. Uh, Dan Jewett and Mackenzie Scott, uh, Mackenzie is the former spouse of Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos, wanted to recognize Cal State Channel Islands for its commitment to equity, inclusion of all students from all backgrounds. That's what that means. Uh, The university was part of Ms. Scott and Mr. Jewett's donation of more than $2 billion to 286 social service and educational institutions that they viewed as agents of real change. So uh, talk about making a difference. We're very grateful um, to have received that donation. So that was some pretty uh, big news for us recently. That's fantastic. Okay, It really is. A a lot of cash and, uh, you know, the campus needs it coming out of COVID, everything that's going to be happening, getting back to regular classes and and doing that. That's uh, really good news. So, uh, Kim, thank you so much for uh, being on air with us here on a Monday morning. It's always on KVTA. Thanks, Ben.